What's up guys? If you're just joining me on my channel, welcome. Uh, my name is Weston Boucher. I'm a professional model based out of Southern California. Right now, I'm just getting into LA for a casting. It's for Lincoln Automotive. It's print work, but most likely in the casting, they'll have me do uh, various things to see how my body moves in front of the camera and all that. Just get a feel for my look as they decide who they want to cast for the role. So I wanted to bring up how important it is to make sure that what you're wearing is relatively close to what image is submitted for the casting by your agency. When you get a casting, you'll be able to see what photo was submitted to the client. And the importance of this, I think, is that, you know, a lot of the times uh, models will show up and they have totally different hairstyle. They don't dress appropriate for the role because in the casting description, it will say what suggested wardrobe is so that they can get a sense of what you look like for what they have planned with the stylist. So it said upscale casual. So to do that, I dressed it up with a cardigan and um, have these Chelsea boots on. So not overly fancy, but still nice. I'm about to head in right now. I will keep you guys posted. Okay, so the casting went good. Uh, waited a little over an hour, which uh, usually it's only 20 minutes, but sometimes you can wait when it's one of the better jobs that's uh, you know shooting maybe one to four days. So you'll get um, agencies sending more models typically. It's just a more sought after job if you can book it. I think it went really good, but the thing is, is even as many as I've done over the years, I still always walk out thinking, oh, I wish I would've done this, wish I would've done that. Um, if anything, for me, I feel like my audibles were really good in terms of me interacting with the other guy. Um, it was a setup to where, you know, you're in your Lincoln car and you get it serviced, right, at the dealership. They're going over the car to let you know what they've done to it. And so we're just kind of going back and forth a little bit. And we had good chemistry, so that worked well. If anything, my only regret would be that well, there's maybe a couple. One, about performance-wise, at the end, it's it's like a makeshift setup for as if you were walking around a car. So you have four chairs in a casting room with like a fake steering wheel on a wooden post. So you have to be willing to get pretty imaginative. Nowadays with print work, the castings are very much like a uh, commercial audition where you have to hit cues and because they really want to see how you're going to look from a lot of different angles. The standard's higher. So it's really good that you know you want to take acting classes and intro to commercial acting class, for example. I've done a couple different ones um, over the years that are like eight weeks long and stuff. Because even if you don't want to do acting or commercials, you're still gonna want to have that those chops to be able to feel comfortable in those scenarios for print work castings. So the other thing that I was gonna talk about that I regret is uh, that I didn't cover up my neck tattoo. This is for a sophisticated role, and um, a lot of the times. <laughs> Clients and brands and casting directors can't see past tattoos and don't think, oh, we'll just cover it up because it really is not that big of a deal. It takes like 20 minutes at, at best. The thing is, is uh, I could have done that on my end before I got there. I probably should have done that. It was just me being a little bit careless. Um, we'll see, sometimes it doesn't matter. Second uh, is that I went at the end, he, the service rep role, was supposed to open my door, my, the door that's not there, I get into the car, right? Well, when I got in, I just put my hand on the steering wheel, one hand, you're supposed to do, you know, uh, 12 and two, just by default, just for the reasons of safety and stuff like that for commercials. But that was really wasn't what I was upset that I did, is that I didn't, you know, pretend like I put on my seatbelt, I didn't pretend like I put the car in drive, you know, I just put my hand on the steering wheel, kind of looked forward, looked to the right, not the worst thing, like I'm pretty hard on myself, but that's kind of, they're seeing a lot of really good talent. And there's odds are that there's guys that, you know, played that role so well and just killed it because they've done a lot of commercials and stuff. So I'd say that's kind of my own constructive criticism for, for me. I felt like I slated good. Um, slating is when you first get in the room, they have the camera on you and they basically say, all right, uh, go ahead, tell us your name. And you know, you say, hi, I'm Weston Boucher. Then they ask for profiles. You turn to the right, you turn to the left. Uh, take your time when you do that, by the way, don't be too fast with it. And then you do a full 360, so they can kind of see your whole body as you move. And then uh, from there, they usually ask you a random question to get a feel for personality. In this case, it was just Memorial Day weekend. 
So uh, they asked me what I did. And I said, well, I'm actually from San Diego and I uh, spent almost a whole weekend playing beach volleyball. The weather was amazing, had good times with good friends. Just love being by the water, that's my thing. And that's it. So you wanna keep it short, you wanna look like you enjoy life. <laughs> And uh, you don't want to act super nervous. Just be yourself more than anything. Don't try to be something they want you to be. That'll just always bite you, in my opinion, unless it's like you're a full-on theatrical actor and you need to embody another character. Um, so yeah, let me get in the car here and I will talk about a few more things. Another thing I was thinking about is when you're um, doing a casting where you have other actors in the room or models that you have to interact with, it's helpful if you're um, really genuine and outgoing with them the second you walk in the room. Some of the times I'll go in a room and the other models won't even you know, talk to each other or introduce themselves really quick. I mean, you don't have a lot of time. Like, you literally have to do it while you're walking into the room. And, um, I, you know, I, I took the time to do that. I look, look in their eyes because I want them to know that I do respect them and I want to try to do the best I can for, um, to, for both of us to have the chance to get the role because technically me and him could end up having the chemistry on camera where the client's like, oh, these guys are, you know, get along good. It seems like they're both respect, respecting each other. And, and that's important, I think. There could be a real disconnect they could pick up on if you're just a typical LA type and you're just like, all about you and that's it um because it's a collective effort for a lot of these projects well, i mean it always is so don't think you're uh too fancy to take the time to acknowledge uh, another human being so in my ebook how to become a male model the ultimate cheat guide as well as some of the other ebooks um i have uh i talk a lot about castings and w way more in depth than what i'm talking about now what to bring how to prepare and the whole process from start to finish um, so that you can have something to refer to that can be on your tablet that you bring with you anyways that has all your modeling images on it. So you could bring that up before a casting, feel like you get in the right mental place, make sure you hit all your check marks on stuff that you need to do before you get there, and just um, feel comfortable knowing what to expect so that you can perform and be yourself and not be like thinking in your head like, oh, what should I do, what should I, what did I forget, blah, blah, blah. So that's why I feel like my guide is something that's not an expense, but it's an investment. I mean, you're gonna make it back in one job like 10 times over. That's how much these, these jobs pay um, on like, and that's on the low end. So you have to really think about you know, not being cheap when it comes to getting information from people that are experienced and have done this. Um, Cause I wish I had that going back. I would have booked so many more jobs. So another thing I wanted to mention was that during the slating of my name, when I say, hi, I'm Weston Boucher, they also ask, are you willing to shave? That's really common if you show up with a beard. They just wanna know if you're willing to do that to alter your look enough, because sometimes you might have a job, follows the date of their shoot, you need to have your beard, so you can't, you can't go back once that's gone, obviously. Um, but I bring that up because in that time, I typically mention, oh, and I also have um, professional grade, camera ready, tattoo cover-up makeup that I bring to set for the artist to use, so these can all be covered up, no problem. That I also failed to mention. So today, I feel like, um, you know, the factors that I mentioned could have a bearing on whether or not I booked this. There were a lot of guys there that really, I thought, fit the role well. They, they looked like uh, believable to me. And um, yeah, we shall see, but you never know. I've gone to castings where there's 200 plus guys, and I'm thinking the same thing. I don't hit my mark perfect, I mess up, and I still end up booking it because sometimes, you know, the clients just, you walk in the room and, and you're just what they envisioned and you luck out. But I always like to have everything in my favor if I can, so um, a little bit of, uh, you know, regret in that regard, but you know, there's gonna be more castings, it's just the way it goes. We shall see. So as always, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and uh, stay tuned for more uh, content that I hope will help, hopefully, bleh, help you guys uh, with your modeling careers if you're aspiring or your current uh, working model. Um, I also wanted to mention um, in the description below, I will have a link for a new uh, Facebook group 
that's uh, it's closed and it's exclusive for um, the aspiring and working male model to go in there and engage and talk shop, ask questions about anything and everything related to the modeling industry. Um, I'm gonna be a moderator, so I can't answer every question, but I am gonna be active in it. And it's just a safe space for you to go in and maybe if you have questions you just don't wanna publicly like announce to everybody and you're just curious about the industry, or maybe you're working and you wanna go full time, or you just aren't growing on social media, whatever it is, it just is a place where you know we can all talk about it and hopefully share each other's experience and help each other out and fast track to, to get where we need to be, where we wanna be and uh, continue to grow and um, refine by you know all ships rising together, us helping each other out because there's always more to learn. I can learn more from you guys. Um, also, make sure you comment below on anything you wanna see in the future. Um, I'm gonna probably do a Q&A video coming up soon. So this is an opportunity to comment below about a question that maybe you want to uh, have me answer and I will select from the list of things I think are relevant enough that would be interesting to uh, the rest of the subscribers. And uh, from there, I will keep you posted on when that video is coming up, but stay tuned. And again, don't forget to subscribe. All right, guys, best of luck in the meantime. Let's get some bookings, huh?